All right, welcome back. We're gonna look at some more examples dealing with continuity. So we'll start with this piecewise function here. You'll see we have three different parts. We have x plus one for x values less than one. We have three for when x is equal to one, and we have this quadratic for when x is greater than one. And it's graphed right over here. So the question here is, where is this function continuous? And if it's not continuous everywhere, where is it discontinuous? And right off the bat, I see that we have an interruption in our graph right here. So this is a big pointer that we have a discontinuity. So let's see where that is. It looks like it's at x equals one. So we know we have a discontinuity at x equals one, but let's quickly show that it's discontinuous by using limits. So if I have the limit as x approaches one from the right of the function, and if we have the limit as x approaches one from the left of the function, let's see how these compare. We'll start on the right side, and as we get close to x equals one, we are leading towards y equals one. So that's gonna be one. And then if we look at the left side and we follow the function from the left side, as we get to x equals one, we're approaching y equals two. So these two limits are not equal. And so therefore, the limit as x approaches one from both sides of the function does not exist. And that is very important in determining that there is a discontinuity at x equals one. Not to mention that the value of one of the function is equal to three, right? We actually have a value for this value of x and it's three. And so not only do the limits not agree from either side, but the limit as it approaches one, which doesn't exist, is not the same as the value at that point. So this value of x equals one is discontinuous for sure. So we'll say we have a discontinuity at x equals one. But is it removable or is it non-removable? Remember, it's removable if we're able to redefine our function in a way so that we can remove that discontinuity and have a continuous function. Well, in this case, we have a piecewise function and it's not going to be possible to redefine this to make this continuous in any way. It's just not going to be possible. And that's just the nature of piecewise functions. So we would say that this is non-removable. So then where's our function continuous? Well, our function is going to be continuous from negative infinity to one, unioned with one, to infinity. Remember, it does not include one. It's just all the numbers between negative infinity and one, and all the numbers from one to infinity. It is not continuous at one, and that's the most important thing to note here. Next, we have the function x cubed, and I wanna know, is it continuous at the point x equals negative one? Well, let's investigate. Let's look at our graph here, and x equals negative one would be right here. So we'll look at the limit, as x approaches negative one from the right side, and then we'll look at the limit as x approaches negative one from the left side. And let's see if these are equal. So we'll start from the right side. So as we get close to x equals negative one, we are getting to y equals negative one. And the same is going to be true from the left side. As we get to negative one here, we're gonna be getting to negative one in the y-axis. So these agree. And so the limit from both sides is negative one. So that agrees. And then the actual value of the function at negative one is also negative one. As you see, this is a smooth curve. The function is continuous everywhere along the x-axis. So in this case, we could say that x cubed is continuous everywhere. And that means it is continuous from negative infinity to infinity along the real line. For our next example, we have the function x squared plus two x minus three over x minus one. And here's our graph for it. And as we can see, we have a hole at x equals one, which can also be seen from our function right here. If we were to plug in one, we would get one minus one on the bottom, which would equal zero, which would give us an undefined value. And we don't want that. So we know that we have a discontinuity at x equals one. But is it removable or is it non-removable? Well, if we look at our function, I see something that we can factor. So let's see what happens if we factor that. This is going to be equal to x minus one in the denominator. And then if we factor the top, we're gonna to have x minus one and x plus three. And so these two x minus ones will cancel. And now we have the function x plus three. So we were actually able to redefine our function in a way that removes our discontinuity. So x minus one would be a removable discontinuity. 
And notice that the function that we're left with here, our redefined function of x plus 3, would be this same line over here, but without this hole. So that's kind of a way to visualize, well, how is it removable? And that's kind of how that works. It would still be the same line, just without that hole. Now, if you also want to do it from the limit approach, you could check for the limit as x approaches 1 from the right and the left, and we would see what we would be going to y equals 4 from either direction. But even though the limit would be 4 from both sides at x equals 1, the actual value of x equals 1 is undefined, so those wouldn't be equal, which just further proves that we have a discontinuity here. But what if we were to look at a function without its graph? Are we still able to determine if it's continuous at every point in its domain? Or for all real values of x? So we'll start with an easier example. We have x squared plus 3. And if you think about this, this is just going to be your typical x squared function just shifted up 3 units. And we know that x squared is a continuous function. It doesn't have any holes, no gaps. It doesn't have any interruptions anywhere. And so we can say that this doesn't have any discontinuities and would be continuous everywhere. So it would be continuous on negative infinity to infinity. And so you can plug in any value of x and you're going to get another value of x out. There's no undefined values. Again, no holes, no gaps, no nothing. So this is a continuous function at every point. But how about the function one over x squared plus one? Well, what would make this function discontinuous? Well, we would know that any time that the denominator is zero, we have an undefined value and thus a discontinuity. So we'll set the denominator equal to zero and see if we can find any x values for which this would be undefined. So we'll have x squared plus one equal to zero, which is equal to x squared equal to negative one. But we know that there's no number that we can square to get negative one. We actually have an imaginary number set for that, but we're not working with imaginary numbers here, and so there's no value of x that would make this function undefined. So in that case, this function is going to be continuous everywhere. So that means it would be continuous on negative infinity to infinity. So now let's look at the function f of x equals x over x squared minus four. And just like we did with the last example, we want to ask ourselves, where could this function have a discontinuity? Well, what would make it discontinuous is if the denominator was equal to zero. So once again, we'll set our denominator, x squared minus four, equal to zero, and we'll solve to see if there's any x values for which this would be zero. So we would have x squared equal to four, and we know that if we take the square root of both sides, then we'll have x equal to plus or minus two. So that means that if we were to plug two or negative two into this function, we would get an undefined value because we'd have zero in the denominator. So we know that we have a discontinuity at two and negative two. So I'm actually going to write out discontinuities at x equals two and x equals negative two. Now, are they removable or are they non-removable? And that's why I left some space there so we can write if they're removable or not. And in this case, if you look at our function, there's nothing we can do to simplify this. Sure, we could factor the bottom. We could have x plus 2, x minus 2, but there's nothing to cancel out. So this function cannot be redefined to remove any discontinuities. So both of these are going to be non-removable. So to summarize, for the function x over x squared minus 4, we have two discontinuities at x equals 2 and x equals negative 2, and they're both non-removable. So then the function is continuous on the interval negative infinity to negative 2, unioned with negative 2 to 2, unioned with 2 to infinity. And this just says that from all the values from negative infinity up to negative 2, but not including it, and then from all the values from negative 2 to 2, again, not including either of those numbers, and then from 2 to infinity, not including 2, all of those values in between, the function is continuous for. It's only discontinuous at negative 2 and 2. So now let's look at the function x minus 4 divided by x squared minus 16. And once again, we'll ask ourselves, where could this function be discontinuous? and it would have a discontinuity if it was undefined somewhere. And that happens in the denominator. So once again, let's set our denominator equal to zero and see where this would be discontinuous. So we have x squared minus 16 equals zero, which is equal to x squared equal to 16. And then we take the square root of both sides and we find that x can be equal to plus or minus 
4. So we know we had two discontinuities at x equals 4 and x equals negative 4. But once again, are they removable or non-removable? So let's look at our function this time. And it seems that with this function, we can actually redefine it a little bit because we have a difference of squares here and we also have a quantity that might be able to be canceled out. So let's see what happens. We'll have x minus four over x plus four times x minus four, right? This comes from our difference of squares here. And now x minus four and x minus four will cancel. So now we'll have the function one over x plus four. So we were able to remove our x minus four term. And if you remember, x minus four equal to zero gives us x equals four. So our removable discontinuity would be x equals four. So if we have our discontinuities of x equals four and x equals negative four, four is going to be removable. But now let's look at what we're left with. We have one over x plus four. This can no longer be redefined, so we're left with a discontinuity still at x equals negative four, because if I plugged in negative four, we'd have zero in the denominator and then an undefined value. So that means that at x equals negative four, we would have a non-removable discontinuity. So once again, to summarize, we have two discontinuities at x equals four and x equals negative four on the function, which means that this function is continuous on the interval negative infinity to negative four, unioned with negative four to four, unioned with four to infinity or positive infinity. So everywhere except for negative four and four, this function is continuous. Finally, we're gonna quickly look at this function here. We have the square root of x plus seven. You notice we haven't looked at any square roots yet, and that's because they're a little bit different. Because determining if a function is continuous is all about looking at where the function exists as well. As you may know, this function does not exist everywhere along the real line. In fact, we can't have any values in here that are negative because we can't take the square root of a negative number without bringing in imaginary numbers. Because in this case, we're only worried about real numbers. So then if we take what's ever under the square root and set it greater than or equal to zero, we can see what values of x our function is defined for. In this case, x plus seven is greater than or equal to zero gives us that x is greater than or equal to negative seven because we just subtracted this seven over to this side. And so what this tells us is we can plug in numbers from negative seven and greater into this function and our function will be defined for those values. And you can see that if we plugged in negative seven in here, we would have the square root of zero, which would be zero. But if we plugged in negative eight, we'd have the square root of negative one which is not a real number. So what that means is that our function is defined on negative seven to infinity. And notice that for all of those values, there's nothing in this function that would create a discontinuity. There's no way for there to be any undefined values. There's no holes, there's no gaps for anywhere that this function is defined. So we would say that this function is continuous everywhere it exists. So it is continuous on the interval negative seven to infinity which is also where it is defined. There are no discontinuities in this case. All right, so those are all the examples I had for our discussion on continuity. This is going to be very helpful in our next lesson. So hopefully you understood everything we went over. If you have any questions still, please feel free to put them in the comments below. But that's all I had for now. So I'll see you next time.